Hey, a little less giggling. You guys are going to make people like think like, hey, they're probably drunk with new wine. Sarah, she just flows right into it. today, bro? No. You do? Because somebody's there, right? Are all the other kids home or gone? They're on break. Do you think there are that many there? Like enough that you have to feed them?
I didn't know that. When I was a kid, I forget where it was, but they had a place called The Hunt. Yeah, that's where they're from. It is? Yeah. I'm old. It's near, it's near North Carolina, actually. In the basement. Yeah. You stay in the basement. Three miles. You thought you were going to when it does come out, beat yourself up. Three levels. The Hunt? Yeah. There's Did you ever go to Huddle on campus? We thought we were so cool, we were 12, we'd rather buy a chair and go to the huddle. And they had like fries and onions. You don't work there though. Wow. No, what was there? There was another like a, you know, on, you know where Edison and, uh, uh, yourself, that's Ironwood. Edison was in the Ironwood area. Uh, I think also Penn State House was around there. Okay, let's begin. Page 186, face to face. Page 186. Let's all stand, shall we? Sing him by and 
Have a seat. Have a seat. Get ready. I don't know when we're going to do it, but you're going to give testimony. But before we do that, I want to get you ready for Thanksgiving. What do you use to make Thanksgiving bread? Mayflower. Come on. What do vampires call Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving. Come on. Should we pray first? Why can't you take a turkey to church? Why can't you take a turkey to church? Because they use foul language. <laughs> F-O-W-L, don't, don't write me down and turn me in. How do you keep a turkey in suspense? I'll tell you later. <laughs> I like them. What do you call it when it rains turkeys? Think. Foul weather. Foul weather. <laughs> Thank you, Shirley, finally. Why did the police arrest the turkey? They suspected foul play. Last one. For now, what do space station turkeys say? Hubble, Hubble, Hubble. They're not going to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so I'm trying to get some of you to smile. It's not working, so I'm hoping when you get to heaven, you will. We have people sick, pray for them, pray for, it's the holiday, you know what I mean, let's pray. Heavenly Father, tonight we are glad to be here, we're, we're gladder that someday we will see you face to face. Thank you for that great promise. I'm thankful today and every day. That Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you for that. Bless our night. Bless everything we say and hear. God be with those who can't be here, who want to be here. They can watch. I pray they'll be almost as blessed. I'm asking this. I'm praying it in Jesus' name. Amen. Page 185, my Savior first of all. Page 185.
on the third. Oh, the dear ones in glory, how they beckon me to come, and our parting at the river I recall. To the sweet bells of Eden, they will sing my welcome home, but I long to meet my Savior first of all. I shall know Him, I shall know Him, and redeemed by His side, I shall stand. I shall know Him, I shall know Him, by the print of the nails in His hand. On the last, through the gates to the city in a robe of spotless white, He will lead me where no tear will ever fall. In the glad song of ages, I shall mingle with delight, but I long to meet my Savior first of all. I shall know Him, I shall know Him, and redeemed by His side I shall stand. I shall know Him, I shall know Him, by the print of the nails in His hand. Amen. Amen. You have a prayer list. Let's do that. Let's, um, we'll pray in a minute. There are things in the bulletin. I hope you're aware of that. Let me read, um, let me read one. I have three here that people that wanted to read or give testimony and uh, are not here. So let's do that. Let me read this and then we'll pray. And then we'll have the offering, and then after the offering, I'll read. I have two more, and then you get ready if you want to share something. You don't have to, but just give thanks to God, praise to God. That's why you're singing. That, that's praise to God, right? And if you mean it, you, you, if you sing it this way, I shall know him. That's not very convincing. Fanny Crosby could not see. She was anxious to get to heaven to be able to see, but her first desire was to see him. I'll just tell you, this is from Connie, Vernon Connie Slack. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Lord, you have blessed my life above and beyond that I thought would be possible. I praise God for Vernon and my family. I thank God for the many wonderful years I've had with Vern. I thank God for the wisdom and strength to care for him now. I appreciate, and I, I'm just reading what's written, okay? I'm not embellishing it. I'm not including myself. Well, I don't like it, but I appreciate and love our pastor and Amy. But pastor, most of all, he's the very best. There's nobody better he is so great. Oh, wait a minute. I'm, okay. I've got carried away. <laughs> but I'll read, okay. <laughs> oh, so you know. So it did say, he is the very best. Nobody's greater. I think he's God. Okay. No, yeah. I, okay, I'll read it like Lisa read it. I appreciate and love our pastor and Amy. I cannot tell you how my brothers and sisters in Christ have blessed me. Our church family loves us, and I daily thank the Lord for the many prayers that bless Vern and my life. Amen. 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 We're going to pray. Pray however you want. I'm going to, I'm, I'm mic'd up, so I'm going to kneel. Heavenly Father, we are thankful. Thank, I'm thankful that I can hear how others are thankful. I know I'm not the only one that's thankful. I know I'm not the only one that has something to be thankful for, people to be thankful for, things to be thankful about. I know that you bless. You don't just bless me. I'm glad that you have allowed us to be able to be blessed and then to share that blessing. 
Lord, tonight as we pray, we do pray for Vernon Connie. Thank you for them. Connie needs strength. She does need wisdom. May you guide her, Lord, as she cares for Vern, who has a hard time just with so many things now. I'm so thankful for him, the blessing he's been. Lord, we are humble to be able to pray, humble to be able to come to you and say, Lord, there are people that are not saved that need salvation. I'm glad that you're not willing that any should perish. So as I pray for lost people, whether it's people in my family, or around me, people I talk to, people I witness to, people on this sheet, my confidence is that your will is that you don't want anyone to perish. So as we... God, I hope daily pray over the people on this list to be saved. May we not just pray, but say, Lord, use me. And it may be that as someone else has an opportunity to witness to those people that we're praying for, that might be how you want to reach them. It might be that you want to use us or the one that said, I want this friend or this loved one on there. And it may be that we have the opportunity to talk to them, to share Christ. So, Lord, as we look forward to telling people what Jesus did, how he loves us, how he cares about us, how he took our sin, paid the price. Lord, I, I pray we'll just get excited about that. And that's something that we can't just work up. It should be something that works us up. We ought to be excited about being saved, excited about belonging to God, excited like Fanny Crosby as she wrote, I, I, I shall know him. Lord, we ask you for healing for those folks on this list who with cancer. Man, Lord, I hate cancer. I, I'm asking you to work in every person struggling. That There's names on here. Some people we only know about. Some are very close to us. I think of Larry McFarland. I pray for him. Healing, strength, please, God. For Patty Wilson, Cousin Patty, please. Heal her, help her. For Casey Kaufman. Lord, that he'll just fix his eyes on you. And be able to say, I want what you want, Lord. I pray for others, God, who just are struggling with something that hurts, something that won't heal. I know there are some tonight just don't feel well and they want to be here and they can't feel like they shouldn't be here. And so, Lord, thank you. Thank you that we could pray. Thank you that there are those that are getting better. Just continue to give them full strength. Thank you, God, for preachers. Thank you for Pastor Mitchell at Fairhaven. May you use him and guide him and energize him thank you god for missions thank you for the shocks in cambodia bless their work there work tonight in us god use the testimony to challenge us use the preaching of the bible to cause us to be more godly more holy christians i ask this in jesus name amen we want to take an offering i i don't know why we'll because we do. What do you call the feathers on a turkey? Turkey feathers.
But maybe you're thinking too hard. What's the best thing to put into a pumpkin pie? Your teeth. Scott, I thought you'd get that. I could just sense that you were on. Can a turkey jump higher than the Empire State Building? Yes, because buildings can't jump. You're thinking too hard. What do you get when you cross a pilgrim with a cracker? A pilgrim. <laughs> this one's borderline. Why did the pilgrim's pants keep falling down? Because his belt buckle was on his hat. <laughs> Calm down, Brown. This one's bad. We'll close with this one. This is cruel. Where do you find a turkey with no legs? Exactly where you left it. <laughs> that's terrible. Man, that's cruel, cruel. Give tonight if you want. If you need something, take it out. God's watching, though. And so if you want to do that, go ahead, but God's watching. Father, we love you. We need you. We want to be encouraged to be more thankful. Work in our hearts. Work in the teams tonight as they may. I pray they'll be blessed. I'm, I'm asking this in Jesus' name. Amen. Page 184, Jesus led me all the way. 184. Let's all stand, shall we?
be seated. I don't know why I like that song, but I do. It's just powerful. Let me read two more, and then you that means you have time to get ready. And I'm coming at you with a microphone. This is from Belinda, Bill and Belinda, who are out of town. Pastor Ruli, Amy, and church. We're so thankful for this church and for how God has answered prayers for us this year. He brought us there in June. Thank you for your prayers for our family all these years. Love in Christ, Bill and Belinda Dameron. And this is from Janine. It's long, but that's okay. That'll take up more of your time so you won't be so long. From Janine Robleski. I would like Pastor to read my thankful note. I know it may seem long, but I have so much to be thankful and praise God. I have so much to be thankful for. I want to thank my precious daughters, my grandson Dylan, Roger and Lynn, Craig and Sandy, that's her brothers, and all they have done did for me and all the time they sacrificed to help meet all my needs, being there for me and the love they gave me. Roger and Lynn, thank you also for the encouragement. Craig, for all his godly wisdom. Thank you, church members, for all your prayers. Carol Brown, for her faithful verses she sent me daily and continues to do so. They would, they would always be the right ones. John Berkey, for his prayers. All the ladies that took the time to bring me meals. Lisa Westfall, Beth Reed, Carol Brown, and Lynn. Thank you, Pastor, for all the good messages online. Thank you and Amy for all your visits and prayers. Thankful for the time you took to pray with me for my breathing problems that I'm having. God place you. I'm, I'm, just, I'm not going to fix this. You know what she means. Have you ever gotten those texts where you read it and then you got to read it twice? Okay, I'm, I just, she, she's thinking and writing. And it was a text, so I printed it out from a text. So you, if you go, oh, she didn't say it right. Well, yeah, you. God place you at the right place at the right moment. Thank you, Amy, for all your love and encouraging text messages. But most of all, I thank the Lord as I prayed for his will to be over my life and that he would be glorified in that sur surgery room, and he was. As the surgeon was amazed, shook his head saying that he had to give me blood and more oxygen and said it went smoothly. I said that was because his hand, his hands was in God's hands. Right, John Sheets? I had other physical issues that sent me to the ER and was readmitted to the hospital. I thank God he has been with me every step of the way. But through it all, I have learned to keep trusting God no matter what or how dark it is and I can't see clearly. I will cling to his loving hand. God is so good. It amazes me to think how much he thought about us in all his creation that he created the cow to give us food and a cow valve to help function our heart. I hadn't, wow. I'll think about that every time I eat a hamburger. What an awesome God we have with a greater thought he lives within my heart. Amen. I praise God and give him all the glory. Maybe we should have you write these out because I think you can get more done when you do that. So press on on the bottom. Hello? 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 Are you on? Hello? Raise your hand. First come, first serve. Should we start like this? Could we do that? Oh, him? Go. Him. I mean, what's your name? <laughs> I am thankful for. Here? Okay. I am thankful that we have a God that is loving and healing. I was married to Barb for 28 years, and her death put a hole in my heart. And after more than six years, I believed that that hole was going to remain with me. But I continued to pray. And God healed my heart by sending me a gift. And the gift is Shirley. And through her love, my heart is smiling again, more than it ever has before. Life has lessons for us. 
and I learned two things from this, from this journey that I had. One is that we should never quit on God because God will not do that to us. Continue to pray. The other thing that I learned from this is that when we are in despair, God will intervene in our lives on his timetable, not our timetable. And we need to be patient, continue to pray, and continue to wait for him to intervene in our lives. I just want to thank God for this church. I want to thank him for salvation. I want to thank him for everything. He's been there with me the whole way. And I want to thank my church family for being there. You've been there for me when I was at my lowest. And I'm hoping you'll be here with me when I'm at my happiest. So anyway, that's. I just want to praise God for that. Amen. Imagine that. I might be here a while. <laughs> I'm thankful for a lot of the things that we normally are. My wife, my boys, uh, this church. I'm even thankful for that man there. Amen. But there's, I've, I've let God down. I take him for granted and think I was saved like 52 years ago and I've gotten to the point now I, I'm unthankful because I don't appreciate what he's done for me. I, I'm thankful for you folks. You prayed I wouldn't be here today to take care of my wife if you folks hadn't prayed. I should not be here. But I'm, it, when I take him for granted, to me that means I'm unfaithful. I'm not faithful. I'm not thankful. As I said, 52 years ago, God saw a simple speck. For some reason, he loved that speck enough to save me. I can't understand that. I still can't get over it, but I'm not thankful enough. I don't think about it like I should, and I shouldn't even say this, but I'm old enough. I'm starting to lose it now. I have short memory problems. I had in my mind all the things I wanted to say. If I don't write them down, I got problems. But to me, if I'm not faithful, I'm not thankful. And too many times I'm unthankful because I take for granted what he has done for me. The fact that he saved a worthless speck, knowing that that speck would continue to sin against him his whole life. And how can he love me that much knowing what I am and how I was going to fail him 50 years ago. And I just can't get over that. And so I have, and I'm hoping you, some of you will take this to heart, that I've asked God to remind me every day to be thankful for what he's done. And I'm going to strive to do that Every day when I pray, I, I ask him to help me be the first thing I say in the prayer is, thank you. Thank you, God, for what you've done for me. And I hope some of you might take the hint. I think we all need to do that because we can't, can't comprehend the kind of love that he showed by saving us, knowing that we're going to be a sinner all of our lives. I, I can't, my 
poor brain can't get around that. And, uh, but thank you, God. Oh, no. <clears throat> uh, Psalm 4610. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. So this year, I'm thankful that the Lord is teaching me to be still. I don't do that well. I pick things up in a figurative way. And... He's showing me how to be still. And just like Ken said, in his timing, he will be exalted. And so my prayer and thankfulness to God is that he's showing me how to not pick things up in a figurative way and not to force things my way but to know that his way is best and that he can be exalted if I let him work. <laughs> we won't need preaching, will we? Ladies first. You don't have to. I mean, I'm just walking this way. I wouldn't turn down an opportunity like this. <laughs> I am just so glad to have Christian friends in this church and Kevin too. You know, I'm happy for him and <laughs> and our family. And I'm so glad that the Lord has helped my mom through this cancer adventure we've had. And um, we're still, you know, going through a few things, but um, she's in remission right now. But we're thankful that um, even through hard times that he's always there and he gives us a song in our heart. thank the Lord mostly for my wife because she's, she's always there for me she's so faithful and she's a hard worker and she just takes so good care of us that I love her and I appreciate her and the church too and the pastor and all, all the friends here thank you for all your prayers continue to pray I'm still struggling with my breathing problems but the Lord's good and he's provided thank you Well, I really didn't think about saying anything, that, but at my house for the last several weeks, really, my daughter has been digging through the archives. And uh, one of the things that's interesting is she has pulled out a lot of Bibles from my ancestors, and I'm just thankful for the heritage I have, the people that have directed in my family that have known the Lord, and as a result of that, I'm sure that's why I know the Lord today, and I'm thankful for it. That's good. I've been thankful this year to be able to help with the uh, food in the Omana again. It's such a blessing to see those kids enjoy their food and want to take home what we have left, and um, we don't know what they get to eat at home. So we're just thankful to be able to do that for them here. And uh, on top of that, I'm thankful for my family, for my husband, and for my children, and for the love that God shows us each and every day. Amen. You don't have to. <laughs> yeah. I kind of felt yeah. other ways. No, uh, as uh, somebody who spent most of his life in this church, I've really appreciated just being able to get to know everybody throughout the years and haven't been able to marry my wife in this church. And the one that I grew up in has been very special to me, and I've really appreciated pastor's messages and the time that I've been able to spend with all of you guys getting to know you. I just want to say that I'm thankful for my husband and the lessons that he's taught me over the years. And I'm very thankful for my church and my church family and the relationships I've built here. And, yeah, I'm just thankful for that. Amen. Well, I have.
have a lot that I'm thankful for. Um, I was praying and thinking about what to share, and um, one of the verses that I've uh, been blessed to, to read in my God and I time, Micah 7.7 7 says, Therefore I will look unto the Lord, I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. And as I was meditating on that, oh, over the last few days, as has been mentioned, God has his own timetable. Um, as a parent, you want God's will for your children, but God has his way of working that all out in his own way. Um, ways I would not have chosen for him to work those things out. Um, but he knows a whole lot more about raising kids than I do. And um, just to sit back and wait and do a lot more praying than worrying and fretting about Where's this one going to get a job? Where's this one going to go to school? You know, what's going on in their future, Lord? You know, they're, they're your kids. You gave them to me, and, and now you've got to take what we've instilled in them by trying to be faithful to God and read his word. And, and they know what is right. You know, guide their steps. I'm, you know, I can't control what they do anymore um they're out of my my door so to say and they got to make their own choices good or bad and they live with those consequences and just praying and then trusting because that faith wavers from day to day in so many ways and just learning to to wait on God and pray especially for my kids but there's a whole lot more with with Scott and the business and mom and Beth and it's just like Lord <laughs> you got to take this because uh, I'm making myself sick today Lord <laughs> take it you know and then just to leave it there not go back and pick it up like Lisa was talking about we got to just leave those things with the Lord that is so hard but when we do, that's when we see his salvation evident. Um, and just all the reminders from pastor to stay in the word, check out what I'm saying. And he's, he's right many times. Um, even though he may repeat a message here or there, it's like, okay, Lord, yeah, yeah, I needed that too. Yeah. So, um, and I'm, I'm blessed to be a part of this church. So many friendships, examples, old and young. Um, just, just such a blessing to, to be in God's house and see how God's been growing our family since we came here a little over seven years ago. So thankful for, for God's leading us here. Save me some time, y'all. Well, not much. Go back here to these guys. They never say anything. Want it? Turn yourself up. All right. Um, I was, uh, well, I, I've been doing the sound for quite a while now. I'm trying to think. Uh, I know it was Mr. Berkey who turned it over. We used to have a camera in the middle of the door, um, and he would sit on a little chair. I think that's how I remember it. And uh, he got to the point where he decided to turn it over to me, and and uh, I thank the Lord for that. You know, it it's I don't think of it as a job, though sometimes I do get frustrated, um, but more about little things that God just works on me about, you know, because we all have our different personalities. So um, it's fun. It's fun to do it. 
And I especially thank Pastor for his message about service because um, we did come from another church where we kind of got overloaded in service. Um, It's hard to say that, but I think we spent more time at the church than we did at home sometimes. And and, uh, so it's good to get back to thinking, okay, why am I doing this? Is it what you want me to do? Should I keep doing it? And so far, the Lord's saying, go for it. Um, So that's what I'm doing, and I'm thankful for it. I guess since I run the camera, I should make sure people can see me. (laughs) I am definitely thankful. Um, As Carol mentioned, the way the Lord has helped us, with our children, although I must say I'm especially thankful for my godly wife who has really helped over the years. Um, If you think about it, she's raised the most of it because she's done the homeschooling and stuff like that. So I can't take a whole lot of credit for it, but I do, I am thankful. Um, I know Samuel's back and I was hoping he'd be up here to talk about it, but I'm just thankful for the way the Lord has protected um, I know most of you may know or not know that Samuel hit a uh, crowbar with his car and punctured his gas tank. Um, that, w- that was kind of scary, but the Lord blessed and protect. And uh, at his church down there, a guy there fixed it for free. I just had to get the tank. And he replaced it for free, which was a b- huge praise. Um, and this, I mean... Samuel has adopted brothers and sisters down there now that he just, it's his family away from home, and that's a huge blessing. So thankful for that. Yeah, we may feel a little uh, jealous at times, but very thankful for that. And then this week, I was just reminded how faithful the Lord is to us. Even though we don't, we know he's going to be faithful, and we lack our faith. We don't trust him like we should. And then and then the, the computer or whatever gets fixed miraculously. And it's just like, Lord, I'm, I doubted so much. I was, my faith was lacking, and I'm just thankful that he still loves us. Amen. Thank you all for being so honest. I have to be now. Every day is an adventure. Every day when we get up, we never know what we're going to face. But I know somebody that does. And recently, we both have always been very healthy. But recently, I got stuck with my knees, excruciating pain. So I went to the doctor. You need knee replacements. But you're not going to do it, are you? I said, you're right. I'm not going to do it. You're not going to take any painkillers, are you? I said, you're absolutely right. I'm not. So I came home, and me and the Lord talked and talked and talked and talked. And he said, it'll be okay. I'm going to take care of you. And he did. Now, there's still a little pain. But let me tell you, it's not like knee replacements. Um, So I just praise God every day when I get up. Never know what we're going to face. But I know he's there at the other end. And he goes before me. And he's behind me pushing me. So that is the miracle. And every day, we all have that miracle. And you know, we're not thankful. I mean, we have so much. And we know God is preparing and taking care of us. And um, just, he's got it all under control. I don't, thank God. Did it. I can't follow that. I can't follow, he don't want to follow. I want to thank John for taking part of my time. Thank you, John. That's terrible. 
Anyway, I'm thankful for our church, my family. And I'm so glad I was born in a Christian home. Amen. 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 And a wife who puts up with you. Do you want this? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, I thank God that I'm saved, of course. Um, but I don't think I'm enough, just like, like I heard John talk about tonight. When he said that, I thought, huh? He's not thankful? What do you mean? Because I hear him say that a lot. But he's, what he means is he's not thankful enough. And I know I'm not thankful enough. We're not. We're not. And I was just, that we're just thinking, what would it take to get us thankful? And I thought five minutes in hell, five seconds in hell would do it. Uh, but anyhow, that's enough of that. Okay. Well, anyhow. Uh, but I am thankful for this church. I thank the Lord for my pastor. And I thank the Lord that he has preached the word all these years been faithful. I don't know of a man more faithful and preaches the word like our pastor. And he, no, he's not God. And he's really not as good as he thinks he is. So anyhow, <laughs> got to throw that in there. Got to keep him humble. But I'm thankful that, you know, you, we can come to church and hear the truth. You can't get the truth anywhere radio, TV, newspaper, wherever you might look for truth, it's not there. Now, maybe 1%. You might find some truth somewhere, but you can come to this church, and you can be sure you're going to hear the truth. And I don't know what people do outside, I mean, who especially were not saved. How do they, what do they believe? They don't believe the truth because they're not told the truth. So it's, it's just, it's so frustrating. This world seems to be getting more and more frustrating but I just step back and say well Lord you're under control so I just sit back and kind of ride the wave and do what I'm supposed to do Amen. Miss Marilyn yeah. yeah I have a lot to be thankful for and uh, I know you all do too most of all we all are so thankful for our salvation I know you all feel that in your heart strongly. Uh, where would we be if God hadn't saved us? But recently, um, probably within the last six months, I have come to realize that there's something I need to be so thankful for because it's God's will, and that's for our children I think our Awana children, our own children, other people's children, whether they're young, whether they're old, like mine are, uh, I just have had a, 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 a thought that God, I think God's put in my heart that we need to be more thankful for God's blessing of children. That's what he gave to Israel. And, he, and Israel was his beloved. And he said he would make them a, a, a huge nation. And that's with children. So I'm thankful today for all the children that God gives us here at church. God gives us in our families. But all the ones that God gives us in this whole world they are truly a blessing from God, and I thank him for them. Yeah. Good. <laughs> what are you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm right here. Nothing now. <laughs> I'm thankful for my husband, my pastor. Um, he's been my pastor all these years. <laughs> And I'm thankful that he has stayed the same. He still preaches the same thing. He hasn't lightened the message and hasn't changed his standards. And I'm thankful to be in this church and serve all these years. I love to serve the Lord in any way I can. And I'm thankful to work with the kids. Um, I just want to go, go home and cry each time I'm with them. I just want to help them so much and just show them the love of Jesus and 
teach them all I can about him. <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything about you. <laughs> I'm, um, I am thankful for our salvation, which I know we all are. And um, everyone here tonight, I'm very thankful for the family that God put me into. Uh, my mom prayed for her children all the time. And when he decided to take her home, he had in place her best friend, who was her sister-in-law, Amy's mom, and and her sister and my aunts my aunts stepped in as much as they could and my father did the best he could to raise three girls and a boy and it wasn't easy for him and he was grieving himself but he didn't let anybody really he didn't show it to us as much but he loved her so much, and I'm so thankful that I was, that my parents loved each other. I don't, I don't think that I would have ever been in a broken home if both of them had lived. I don't, I don't think that that would have ever happened in my, in my family, and I'm, I'm blessed because of that. But I'm also thankful for the family, extended family, that, uh, you know, with Amy and Vito and, and the uh, aunts and uncles that I have come to get to know more since I've moved to Indiana. But God has blessed me with a, another family, and that is this church family. And I am so thankful for for all the prayers that you guys give me, the encouragement and um, just just loving on me when sometimes I don't feel very lovable. And uh, I just, I really do thank you for that and, and uh, the help that, that I get and that people have given me and um, just by calling or encouraging or texting or whatever, it's it's meant a lot to me. My my life hasn't been real smooth in my my whole life. I mean, I was almost 13 when I lost my mother. I was 21 when my dad died, and then uh, and then my husband was 53 when he died, and there have been a lot of other things in my life that have gone on. There's a lot of, um, been a lot of valleys and, and um, but there's been a lot of hilltops. And God has brought me through the valleys and lift me up to the hilltops. And um, I just, I'm very thankful that he gives me a song in my heart every day. Every morning I wake up and, and I have some kind of, um, song that we've either sang here or or an old old qu chorus that we used to sing w as kids or but there's a song that comes into my heart every day and I am so thankful that he gives me that joy even through through sorrow he gives us he gives us joy and um, he's been with me through every heartache that I've ever had and he's been there through every joy I've ever had. And I'm so grateful to him. And I'm grateful to all of you. Thank you. You didn't talk about me enough. <laughs> I am thankful that he gave me Vito because Vito is like the brother that I had or have. And, and, uh, where Bob, where Bob left off, Vito picks up and tortures me.
I'm thankful for Aaron that he decided to bring um, me to this church like 19 years ago, an unsaved girl. Um, and I'm thankful for my salvation and for the opportunities that I have to serve here with the kids. And um, there's nothing better than them running up and giving you hugs and just showing their love t towards us. I'm thankful for my family. Um, and even though I fail them sometimes, they continue to love me just like Jesus does. So that's what I'm thankful for. I guess I said for both of us. <laughs> I'm thankful for this church and you and Amy. And also when you tell us to read the word slowly. I've been trying to. Amen. No preaching, Margaret. <laughs> Lord, I am thankful for the best gift that anyone could get, and that's the gift of salvation so many years ago. And I wouldn't know that through, except through the man I am the friend I met and eventually married. He was the one that led me, showed me the Lord and his pastor helped by telling me that God loves everybody, but a lot of people don't love him. And I am grateful and thankful for the messages we hear two or three times a week, and if we're not here, we can listen online and thank for the family that I have that's willing to help and I having to let them do things and not try to be, do, my, do things myself and maybe fall and hurt myself, but they're there just as far away as the phone. And I've seen in my grandchildren, especially the three that are here, that since we came here, they have grown and blossomed and just letting the Lord lead their lives. And it's important to me to see them grow and do what God is calling them to do, not what I would like to see them do. Are you listening? Okay, I want to make sure. Um, God is good even though I'm not. Um, I'm not thankful like I should be and well, I don't always seek him like I should, but, you know, he's still there for me, and he's put people in my life to remind me, even though I don't always appreciate them either. But my parents, my Aunt Shelley, and you have been here for me, and I, I'm very grateful. So I don't know how many of you know, but um, I would say second or third week of August, I was informed that I was being, letting, being let go from my job at InSource. And I'd worked there for about four years. And so when I found out that they were letting me go because they were downsizing and I was the one there with the least seniority, um, I had to find another job. And it was very... Um, you know, I hadn't expected it, so it was shocking, and it was hard because I didn't know what I was going to do. So I started searching. I didn't know where to start or where to look, but I started looking for online jobs. Then I would say maybe about a month or so later, I started looking for jobs anywhere, really, anywhere that Milo and I could go together because... Uh, there's only so many places you can take a dog. You can't work at a restaurant or around food with a dog, even if he doesn't shed. <laughs> so
So I don't know why God had me wait over two months for a job, but he gave me a job at Joanne Fabrics, and I've worked there two days so far, and I love it there. I've learned register. I've gotten to talk to so many people, and it's been such a joy being able to interact with people and make them smile and, you know, um, see them fawn over Milo because that's just adorable. <laughs> and I know if I can't make their day, Milo can. And so I am very thankful to God for giving me this job. And even though, like I said, I don't know why it took so long, but his timing is perfect. And he had a reason for me for waiting. And I am thankful for the little jobs and things that I got to do while I was searching. There were people who um, gave me things to do and were willing to pay me for it. Um, I'm also thankful for my family, and I'm really thankful for how much Samuel has blossomed at college. Um, he's such an encouragement to talk to, and I'm so proud of him, and I hope he continues to grow as he continue, goes back to college and whatnot. And you have a rich sister. <laughs> Any do-overs? Psalm 150. Psalm 150. Say, we're, yep, we got to go. We're going to. Eventually. Psalm 150. Say, when are we going to get out of here? You'll see. You'll be here when it happens. Psalm 150. Psalm 150. The last psalm. Note as we read, verse 1 uses the word praise three times. The next five verses uses the word praise two times each verse. Thirteen times in this one psalm, six verses. Praise. And I'm, if you allow me, I'm going to say praise and thanksgiving is the same thing. Praise God. Thank God. So we're, we're praying. When you sing, that is your opportunity. Everything John Sheet said is right. And if we ever think we're thankful enough, that's terrible. We're not. So when you sing, sing like you're thankful. I'm thankful that I'm, I can't believe, I can't get over that God would save me. Some of you deserve it. I don't deserve it. Psalm 150, he says, Praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in the firmament of his power. The firmament of his power. That is where he is, and nobody else can get there but him. So we're supposed to praise him so it gets to him. Verse 2, praise him for his mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. That's praising Him for His abundance. So we see in verse 1 His throne. You know what? It's easy to praise God at church because other people are around. But when you're all alone, when you're going through something, and you get through to where just God is, and you're thanking God that he's God. Thanking God that he's there. Thanking God that he saved you. Thanking God that, that he knows what to do when you don't. And then you get to verse 2, and we're supposed to thank him and praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Everything we'll ever need, he has. Everything you could ever want, he's God. God, when we pray, he's the answer. We're waiting for something, but God wants us to trust him. The giver, he's the giver. 
He can be everything that we need. Verse 3, praise him. Watch these last verses now have to deal with the volume of our praise. Notice verse 3 says, praise him with the sound of the trumpet. You know what I thought? What am I thinking? I thought of Sam. Aren't you glad trumpets are loud? That's the point there. Pray, verse three, praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Make sure everybody hears. Are you thankful? No. No, 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 no. You weren't supposed to answer. Are, are you thankful? Yeah. People need to hear that you're thankful. Like a blaring, verse 3, talking about a blaring trumpet. Praise him with a sultry and harp. Some of you are more harpy. Some of you, you know, you're, my wife is just, I know she's thankful. She's not me. She's not loud. Someone said, how are you doing? And man, I'm doing great. You ask her, she'll go, fine. She's just as great and fine, but she's more harp than trumpet. Verse 4. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Verse 5, one of my favorite verses. Praise him. Upon the loud cymbals. Can you hear them? If I had some, I would have brought them. Clang! Our praise, our thankfulness ought to be hearable. Ought to be loud. Verse 5. Praise him upon the high-sounding cymbals. That's talking about a certain sound to call everyone to battle. Have you been watching TV and that emergency alert system noise comes on? How annoying. Remember when the tornado sirens used to say would test the siren? You've heard air horns. That, that's, that's what the psalmist is saying. If we're going to praise him, make sure people can hear it. Make sure it's loud. Verse 6, he said, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. We, you've said it. I, I love hearing it. I love testimony. I love to hear. I want you to be thankful. We're, we're, we're saved. God sent his only son to pay for our sins, to rescue us. And if we know just that, just that, we shouldn't have to be told to be thankful. It ought to just come out. It ought to just be, thank God I'm saved. Thank God I know him. The Bible, to me, when I read it, not just in this chapter, 13 times, twice in every verse, three times in one verse, it is assuming we'll be thankful. Bible doesn't can't make us thankful, tells us to be thankful. Doesn't say everything will make you thankful. It says no matter in everything, right? In everything, give thanks. Doesn't mean it's something to be thankful for, but it means that we ought to be thankful. Does it command us? It commands us to give thanks, to be thankful in that situation. The sacrifice, Psalm 107, verse 22, Sunday morning, the sacrifice of thanksgiving. The word praise means to celebrate. I love this. It means we don't use this word. I, I, you don't say it to me. I, I'm, I'm not a teacher. I'm an R and R. I'm a ranner and I'm a raver. I rant and rave about God's word. 
I do. My uncle would call me, oh, man, you are hard on them. Go, I'm trying to get them ready for battle. We're in a battle. So when he says praise, he's saying, hey, make sure you, you rave about it. And that means an enthusiastic yell. Man, I'm glad God saved me. If you want to be lost, be lost. I'm glad I'm saved. And I want those who are not saved to feel bad because I'm so thankful I am saved. I ought to rant and rave about it. I ought to celebrate it. Our excitement for God should keep us praising him to the point, this is just my interpretation. This may not be the correct interpretation. Verse 6 says, let everything that hath breath. In the Hebrew, that means until you're out of breath. Isn't that good? Until you're out of breath. Praise God until you're out of breath. In other words, what God has done for us should, should cause us to get to the point that we are just out of breath for him. Verse 2, there's nothing little about God. There's nothing God can't do. Everything we see, God created. Everything we can't see. Isn't it great when they go into the sky? They go into space. And they're looking years. They're looking years into space. And going, we have not reached the wall. They go to the ocean. They submerge vessels to the lowest point, And they said, there's stuff down there nobody's ever seen. Got news for you, scientists. God made all that. That's all God. Verse 2, mighty acts, excellent greatness. That's God. I miss the beach. I love the beach. I do. I, if I ever just some Sunday don't show up, I'll be at the beach. I, I love the water. I love the sand. And you know, God made every grain of sand on every beach. That is mind-boggling. And then he made us. Think about everything that works. Think of how it works. Isn't it amazing? Blood pumping through your body, doing all it's supposed to do at the right time, in the right way. Your eyes and the structure and creation of your eyes and your ears. Everything, your fingers, the feeling. A little bitty bug can be crawling on your skin and you can feel it. That's God. I mean, that, that to me is just amazing. And no matter how unimportant you think you are, remember God has not forgotten about you. He made you. And he's so great that there's nothing greater than him. We need to praise the Lord for everything we have with everything we have. When you sing, ought to be like you're singing to God, because you are. It ought to be like a loud, verse 5, a loud symbol. You want to make sure everybody hears it. Notice he talks about the timbrel and dance in verse 4. I think we ought to use our whole body to praise the Lord. I think we ought to nod our head. See, I'm not much of an amen or nod your head. I'm watching. Hey, raise your hand if you need to. Say that people will think we're excited. We're supposed to be. I Me, mean, we're afraid. Some people think, you know, some, I'm sitting there, man, I just want to jump up. I mean, no, they'll fire me. I mean, it's exciting. 
We're going to be in heaven. We're not going to stand around. You're not going to sit in a pew in heaven. There, in heaven, there are no pews. They wrote a song about that, didn't they? Oh, maybe not. In heaven? <laughs> Don't go there. It ought, to be, it ought to be serious. We ought to be so serious about praising God on our own. And if we're serious on our own, we won't be able to help it when we're in church. But I don't think I'm sorry. I'm hard on you, I know. I'm trying to get you ready for the bath. We need to be serious about thanking God when we're alone with him. Just us, verse 1, and his throne. The firmament. Look at verse 1. The firmament of his power. Man, that is the centrality where no one else is. We ought to reach that throne and go, God, I'm so thankful for you. I'm so thankful that you saved me. I'm so thankful for all you've done for me. If you're sitting around looking sad, Nobody will believe you. I'm so thankful for God. And then we look like the world's falling apart. I think we ought to make enough noise. I think verse 3, 4, 5, and 6 are telling us, because of verse 1 and 2, that we ought to be making enough noise so that God gets noticed. Let me illustrate. You know why they took the Bible out of the public school? Because people made enough noise to get it out. You know why they took prayer out? Because people made enough noise. You know why the gays, you know why in Plymouth, the local businesses bought every kid in the Plymouth schools a shirt so that they could sit in the bleachers and, and make up a rainbow flag? Because enough people made enough noise that they got noticed, and we're reading it going, that's terrible. It is terrible. It's time we make enough noise about God that God gets noticed. And it doesn't mean maybe that we have to bust in there and start breaking stuff, but if we would just show them wherever we go. It's one thing to praise God in church. We ought to be praising him everywhere we go. Man, I've just been impressed in the book of Acts when it says they cease not. We get out of this building, we're still Christians. We ought not cease to, to sing to God, talk about God, and thank God. We breathe, verse 6, we breathe to praise God. We breathe to praise God. Let everything that hath breath, we breathe to praise God. Are you praising Him? like you should I'm done are you praising him like you should hey it's already been said why don't you make a decision tonight why don't you just say boy I didn't expect this I'm not going to have you walk the aisle but you make a decision you know right God knows what you think if you're sitting there right now going you know it's 820 we would really like to go I know that I know that but I also know we need to be more serious about praising God. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I love you so much. I, 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 I'm an overzealous father. I want so bad for you to live right and to be blessed that, yes, I, 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 I admit, I, 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 I confess, I am overzealous in my desire for you. Tonight, before we go, I don't want it to be for me. I want it to be for you. Preacher, I want to be louder. I'm going to say it that way. I want to be louder in my praise to God so that God gets noticed. Heads bowed, eyes closed. That's me. Raise your hand quick if that's your desire. I want that. I want that. I want that. I want that. God deserves that. I need to do that. Man, this world will get turned upside down if, if a bunch of Christians would just start getting God noticed.
talking about him, praising him. They can see him. Then when people do these foolish things and unbiblical evil things, people will say, that, that can't be. That whole rainbow flag, that whole gay marriage, same-sex marriage. Man, we ought to shame them because we're so loud about God that that's all that people notice. We've allowed them to outshout us. We've allowed them to bang their cymbals and blow their trumpets louder than we do. And look where we're at. God help us. Heavenly Father, help us to use our breath. Every breath until we're out of breath to praise you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.